All right, as of every review, this isn't everything that will be on test number two. You should review any and all homework problems. And, but this is your main focus is definitely chapters three, four, and five. So the first thing you should be able to do is to figure out how to find probabilities from a given table. So here we're given a frequency distribution, some counts on how prepared people are for long-term power outage, natural disaster, terrorist attack. We want to find the probability the next person surveyed is very prepared. So the probability, remember, is going to be the total number that say they are very prepared divided by everybody, the sample size. So 243 divided by the total sample size and we get our probability. Now what if we wanted to know the probability the next person surveyed is not very prepared? In other words, something else. Well, you could take all of these and add them and divide by the total. Or this is where if you understand the complement, it's just faster because the probability they are prepared was 0 0.111. The probability they are, uh oh, the probability they are not prepared would be one minus that value. And that's the complement. Why do we do one minus? Because all probabilities have to add to one. All right, here I have a table that shows the number of male and female students enrolled in a nursing program. Find the probability that a randomly selected student is male, given that the student is a nursing major. That word given is when you know you have to use conditional probabilities. So the probability male, given they're a nursing major, is the probability they're male and a nursing major which is 100 out of the total, divided by the given, the probability they are a nurse, well, nursing majors, 824 out of the total, and the totals cancel. The 3615, those cancel, so you end up with 100 over 824, and you get your probability. Well, what if we wanted to see what's the probability a random selected student is a nursing major given that they're male? to see do we get the same thing. So nursing given male, nurse and male. Well, that probability is the same. But now we're going to divide off the probability they were a male. So 1199 out of 3615 to get our probabilities. Multiplication rule. The important part is to know if the events are um, independent or dependent because if they're dependent, then the probability of the second event occurring depends on that the first event already occurred. So find the probability you flip a coin and get heads and roll a single die and get a four. I don't think these have anything to do to depend on each other. So this would be independent. So it would just be flat out. What's the probability you flip a coin and get a heads? Well, one half. And what's the probability you roll a single die, so a six-sided die, and get a four? Well, there's only one four out of six. Now, what if we wanted to know you draw two cards from a 52 deck, and you want to know what's the probability both of those would be an ace? So you draw one first, and it's an ace. So you already have some information. These are dependent. Now what's the probability the second one is an ace given the first one was an ace? So that changes our probability a little bit. The probability the first is an ace. Well, there's four aces out of a 52 card deck. Now the second, what's the probability the second one's an ace given the first is an ace? There's only three aces left and there's only 51 cards left. All right, I always think of the multiplication rule as and, probability A and B occurs, where, get through all that, where the addition rule, I think of or, A or B occurs. And you have to be careful if they are not mutually exclusive, meaning they both can't happen at once. Um, if they are mutually exclusive, exclusive, then their intersection, the and, is zero. Otherwise, you have to be careful and subtract that out. 
So if we have a class of 30 students, and in this class, 21 are nursing majors and 11 are female. So of the 21 nursing st majors students, six are female. So what we're looking at is if we want to find the probability that we have a female or a nursing student, we have to be careful because we can find the probability they're female and we can find the probability they're nursing, but we've counted this intersection twice and so we end up having to subtract that out. So probability um, female, actually my order's a little bit out of order. So 11 out of 30 are female. Uh, nursing major, 21 out of 30. And then we subtract the six that are both female and nursing, okay, out of the 30 to get our probability. All right, counting principles, if we want to be able to do like combinations to find the number of ways something can occur and then use it as a probability. So let's say there are 15 movies coming out this summer and you're interested in eight of them. What is the probability you actually like two of the movies? So how many ways can you choose two movies out of the eight that you like? Uh, we're saying the order doesn't matter. It could have been the first one you watched or the last one you watched. So we use combinations, which is eight total um, that you're interested in, taken two at a time. So that's my R. Um, what I do is I tend to, I don't really want to do eight times, seven times, six times, five times, four times, three times, two times, one. So I stop when I know the eight minus two, six factorial can cancel. And then I can see that there's actually 28 ways which is actually kind of surprising when you think of combinations um, that I could actually uh, choose two movies out of the eight that I like. Well, what's the total sample space? Well, there's 15 total movies. And once again, I'm only going to choose two that I say I like. And so I find the total number of ways I could pick any two movies out of the total 15 and then finding my probability, I take my 28 divided by my 105. All right, a probability distribution. If I want to find the mean, remember it's just the formula taking each x value, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and multiplying it by the probability and adding all of those up. I want to find the variance. I take each x value minus the mean that I just found, the 0 0.5, and then times the probability, and I add all of those up. How do you find the standard deviation? Just simply square root. All right, if I have a binomial distribution, there are 30 students in this course. The probability a student will make an A in the course is, let's hope it's higher than that, but let's say it's 43%. All right, so binomial, you either make an A or you don't. In this case, all we're interested in. So I want to find the average number of students that make an A. So a binomial distribution, the average, the expected number um, in times P. So remember, P is the probability of success that they made an A. So about 13 students. Find the variance in standard deviation. Uh, this one's a little easier than just the normal um, I shouldn't say the word normal, right? Just the discrete distribution, because this one you just multiply n times p times q. How did I get q? 1 minus p. And then how do I find the standard deviation? I square root. All right, the normal distribution, as I've mentioned, this is very, very important that you understand this. So I have um, a soft drink machine that is suspended. Um, dispensing drinks that are normally distributed with a mean of 12.2 fluid ounces and a standard deviation of 0.2 fluid ounces. A drink is randomly selected and we want to answer these two questions. So let's first look at what's the probability a drink is more than 12.6 ounces. So I draw my normal curve. I put what they've given me, the population mean 12.2, and basically what I want to know is this area more than 12.6 ounces. So I have to standardize because I don't want to do calculus. I want to just look this up in a table. So I take my 
value, my x value, minus the population mean divided by the population standard deviation. I get 2.00. What do you do with that value? You got it. Go find your table. And I get 0.9772. And I answer that and I get mad because I got it wrong because I didn't remember that's the area from the left up to that value. If I want the area to the right of it, what do we, what do you do? One minus. All right, so do not forget that if you are, this is why I always say draw a picture because that beats that into your head um, that that area you're going to have to do one minus. If I want to find a between, remember you just do the same thing we just did, but you find the upper minus the lower. So I have between 11.8 and 12 ounces, 11.8. I get 0 0.0228. My 12, negative 1, I get 0.1587. And students a lot of times will ask, do you always do the larger value? Well, yeah, because probabilities can't be negative. But think about it. If you want this area between and you take all the way to there, so that's all this area, and then you subtract this area. So that's actually what you're doing. The 0.1587 is from the bottom all the way up to that line. The 0 0.0228 is from the bottom up to that line. And